Okay. Controlling the chaos with the symmetric integration. Let me start from our university a bit, like Lazarus likes it in his own lectures. So our university is situated in St. Petersburg, Russia. It's one of the oldest universities in Russia. And uh, mainly we focus on electrical engineering. We have an IEEE milestone because Alexander Popov invented a radio uh, here in, uh, uh, actually it's a lab near my door, <laughs> next to my door, where he did it one day. Uh, about the Yacht Research Institute, it's a new department, it's a Greenfield department, it never existed before 2017. Its mission is about project-based learning, uh, science and R&D. We have four labs and one uh, workshop, uh, it did advanced circuitry, next step electronics, and sensors, including chaos based sensors, uh, computer simulation and nonlinear dynamics lab, which is Alexandra is the head of, uh, and uh, computer creativity and advanced robotics. Uh, so our Q crew is now about four PhDs, seven postgraduates, mo mostly under my humble guidance, and uh, over 9,000 students, really, my very, very a lot of them. Uh, so some view of the labs inside, common equipment for welding, but we have a lot of opportunities for rapid prototyping, prototyping electronics, as I already said, FPGAs, microcontrollers, etc. So we have some also public activities, some shows, exhibitions, open lessons, uh, less lesson, lectures for uh, scholars, for uh, pupils, etc. Uh, so let's start with a general topic. Uh, as we all know, the discrete operator is a, some sort of bridge between continuous system and its uh, finite difference model. And we can convert the continuous system into some sort of uh, finite difference model to perform in computer. Uh, actually, it's, uh, we have a continuous system at once, then we have a, a cloud of points, and then we have a finite difference model. But how we make this important choice uh, usually we just choose the MATLAB uh, basic solver like ODE 4 or 5 uh, or maybe Euler method. Uh, in reality it exists a lot of such methods. Uh, the development was very uh, intensive last 15, 50 years. Uh, and the most interesting topics are geometric integration, led mainly by Ernst Heyer, symplectic integrators, and symmetric integrators. Let's start with symplectic Euler and Sturm Euler integration. Uh, if we have a dynamical system which is conservative and the, the diagonal main diagonal is zero, so we don't have the uh, feedbacks. Uh, so we can make a modification of well-known Euler method uh, and use the calculated value in the next calculation. Please note that uh, this method exists only for systems of order two and more. Uh, there exists another type of this method where we calculate the x2 first and can use its value calculating when calculating x1. Uh, it turned out that such methods, uh, contrary to uh, well-known explicit Euler method and implicit Euler method, uh, they uh, do not uh, impact the phase volume and phase portrait of the system, where implicit methods converge uh, to zero and explicit methods start to diverge. The symmetric, you know, symplectic Euler keeps the energy and the phase volume of the system constant. Uh, this phenomena was discovered and rediscovered many times in uh, numerical methods research by many authors, but nobody considered the case when the system is complete, when the system is arbitrary and have few, few direct feedbacks of the first type. So we proposed the modification of uh, semi-implicit Euler methods, called, we call the D methods, uh, where we took um, one more uh, implicit uh, one more variable implicitly. Uh, here one can use very simple calculation because uh, task is one dimensional. We can we need to calculate only this uh, line, so it can be calculated directly in case of if the feedback is linear. So here's uh, simple calculations like an implicit Euler methods, and it restores uh, the symmetric 
uh, Taylor series. So the system keep uh, preserving the, their properties. If in case if this uh, feedback is uh, strongly nonlinear, for example, a sign function of the variable, etc., we can one can use simple iterations method because uh, contrary to the full scale implicit methods, uh, here we have one dimensional task and it converges rapidly. Actually, four simple iterations are, uh, are okay for achieving the required precision and keeping symmetry. Uh, for speaking of chaotic systems, it means that uh, we can make uh, the continuous simulation without such a, an artifact. So the left plane is uh, simulation by uh, Ron Gikuta two methods, and uh, the right plane is simulation by our D method of order two. So after millions of uh, points, uh, of time points for simulation, the left uh, picture seems to be broken. It diverges quickly. Actually, very interesting cascade of bifurcations caused by uh, methods, the chosen discrete operator. And this, this system behaves completely different from both uh, this system and from both uh, from prototype system. So it behaves completely different, the question that uh, Professor Wallace asked, how, how can we implement this in hardware? <laughs> I, I believe these discrete effects uh, in analog hardware are impossible to reproduce. So how we can use this? Uh, one can choose if uh, you noticed here we have a half of the step size, h is a step size value. We have a uh, uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. But what if you change it? What if it will be 0 0.3 and 0 0.7, for example? Such uh, this is how the adaptive symmetry approach uh, appeared. So we change the point of symmetry, and uh, the system begins to shrink or to expand, or it keeps uh, the phase volume stable. It's not the Hoover system; it's a conservative system of order three. Uh, by the way, the initial uh, symplectic Euler methods, which is well known, is applicable only to the uh, even order systems. So two, four, six, etc., because they use uh, the decomposition or splitting the system on the blocks uh, of order two. We, our, our approach allows to simulate any system of arbitrary order. Uh, moreover, we're now working on uh, simulating fractional order system by this approach, which is of great importance in modern nonlinear dynamics. Uh, so we, one can control the phase volume and uh, our studies, I, there are some papers uh, you can address, for example, in our recent paper in Entropy, uh, that uh, we can apply almost linear law to changing symmetry and control the nonlinear system, its volume and energy, but almost linear way. Why I speak almost? Because there is a the difference. Uh, between conservative systems and dissipative chaotic systems. And dissipative chaotic systems behave uh, uh, very differently from the conservative, conservative systems. Conservative systems can be controlled linearly by this approach. The dissipative systems need to be investigated further, but they uh, experience this uh, phenomena too during simulation. So it's, this approach is applicable to them, but we need to study what happens directly. So speaking about maps, uh, actually, when we implement a continuous chaotic system in a discrete computer, it's already a discrete map. But uh, traditionally in chaos theory and nonlinear dynamics, we speak about uh, speak of uh, chaotic maps as a simple mathematical uh, finite difference models, which produce, uh, uh, to say, Hamiltonian chaos, yes? So the well-known case is the Chirikov map uh, proposed by Soviet scientist Chirikov as a model of uh, charged particle in the magnetic field. Uh, the classical map is here. And in the, this paper in Physica A, we proposed a symmetric version when we replaced the symplectic operator. We, go, we went back to the continuous model and applied our symmetric operator to this uh, system and obtained uh, a symmetric version of this map. As you can see, it possesses uh, all directional symmetry. So you can divide the picture in any, for, with any arbitrary plane or line and uh, the parts will be symmetrical. Uh, the same stands for the Slavsky map, we know, we know case. 
it is interesting because we have science and co-science here, so it's more complicated and it uh, required some interesting uh, modifications. And here we replaced the symmetry coefficient 0 0.5 to this, this equation. So it's uh, one minus S where S is a symmetry coefficient. Um, this sim simulation shows how uh, the phase map of the discrete model changes uh, when we change symmetry and both symmetry and parameter. So here's another idea appeared. The Alexandra knows much more on that. Then we can expand the key parameter, key space par uh, of the map uh, by changing both the nonlinearity parameter and symmetry. So it can actually it can be twice. Uh, moreover, with some approaches, for example, composition of the maps, we can increase it almost in, infinitely. Uh, the only limit is uh, data precision here. Uh, so another case, another problem in nonlinear dynamics is dynamical degradation. When we simulate uh, the discrete system with very low data type, for example, eight, six, or four bits, uh, we can uh, achieve the repeated trajectories where, which are not chaotic anymore. They are periodic and uh, this breaks most of the pseudo-random number generators and can compromise encryption strength, et cetera. So we can, uh, the common way to avoid it is parameter perturbation. When we uh, perturbate parameter from time to time given by some other map or some other law. Uh, but the, there are some shortcomings of this approach. For example, we need to uh, keep in mind that not for each value of the parameter, the system is chaotic. Uh, and sometimes trajectory just leave that rector. Uh, using adaptive symmetry, we can uh, switch uh, between the symmetry values, uh, therefore changing the system output, but it keeps inside chaotic regime and the behavior of the system is not affected. So it's efficient way to avoid uh, chaotic degradation. Also, we have some paper on it, I believe even with co-authorship of our host today. Uh, it, can be, it can be clearly seen from the bifurcation diagrams when we bifurcate uh, the system using ch uh, changing the parameter. So there's an area where it's not uh, chaotic, uh, where the chaos is weak, and then the chaotic system. And uh, when we're changing symmetry in the same diagram, we achieve the uh, full scale uh, chaos mode for all values of symmetry. Uh, the same stands for uh, cycle length estimation. So using our approach, it's, uh, it is able, we are able to effectually, eff efficiently cancel the chaos degradation, as I said. Uh, the key definition, space definition problem is also can be considered uh, because uh, as one can see, not whole space uh, of parameters uh, is um, suitable to make uh, keys from it. So we need to change the area and carefully check uh, when, if the parameter is inside this area. Uh, we don't have such problem for uh, symmetry coefficient because it's obviously that it's for, we choose symmetry coefficient more than 2.5, that it will be, it will be uh, chaotic in any cases. Uh, the same uh, approach can be used for synchronizing chaotic system. Instead of uh, parameter-based parameter synchronization, we use uh, symmetry-based synchronization. Also have some papers on this. And uh, the only limitation that we need to use semi-implicit models as a basic model. So for other methods, it's not, it does not exist. The synchronization uh, scheme is the same when we use control law to balance the symmetry between two systems. Uh, as I said, uh, it's, it does not affect the simulation in any uh, terms. So they will keep cha chaotic oscillations and uh, possible intruder for in the system cannot detect this, almost cannot detect this. We have a project currently going on this with some funding and uh, the recent, recent uh, next papers will be uh, devoted to this point. So the key application of this feature is uh, secure uh, communication systems when we use symmetry parameter switching as a, a possible modulation uh, for the signal. 
we have proved that uh, this type of modulation uh, allows more secure and more robust uh, synchronization that the common commonly parameter based modulation or chaotic mixing or chaotic masking and other modulation techniques uh, moreover this type of uh, data transfer is more concealed so it's harder to uh, detect it because we see the bifurcation diagrams uh, for your system for example one can see that all of them have a cascade of bifurcation where the mode of oscillation changes and this change can be detected by the observer. Uh, in case of symmetry coefficient, uh, whole system from zero uh, symmetry to one uh, keeps being chaotic, just a, a small shrinking of an expanding of phase space can be observed, but this is because of low order of the scheme to illustrate uh, the approach. When we choose lower step size, for example, 1.01, 1, 1. Uh, so this uh, this effect disappears. The same can be observed to spectrograms when um, not easy, not very easy to detect the moment of the data transfer in this case. And here they can be observed when the parameter changed. Uh, finally, based on this approach with two semi-implicit methods, we developed new metrics for chaos measurement. It was our paper in uh, communications and nonlinear science and numerical simulation with Dr. Nipomuseno, uh, where we developed uh, an approach to quantify chaos. Uh, here is the largest Lepunov exponent, the common tool, and the, our metrics allows to detect these small pikes, for example, uh, and uh, it's, um, it is more, uh, uh, more fast. It can be computed faster, especially for a complex system uh, with lower number of iterations. So the numerical effects do not have chances to appear. Uh, the full algorithm is uh, can be found in our paper, so I will not be commenting much in, in much detail on this. But it is interesting approach, and uh, it works at least. So the some conclusions. Uh, for example, first of all, semi-implicit integration allowed us to synthesize uh, adaptive maps and invent some uh, uh, approaches to the uh, Chaos-based cryptography, uh, evaluation the chaotic system by new metrics, uh, synchronization of the system, etc. It's fundamental, uh, fundamental methodology methodology that can be uh, a foundation for very very uh, large amount of further research, in my opinion. Uh, we uh, achieved increased key space. We can reduce chaos degradation in discrete systems. We can uh, control the phase volume and energy of the systems through the changing the symmetry. The most interesting uh, feature here is to the possibility to synchronize analog and discrete system. What will happen if we change symmetry in discrete system, which is completely synchronized with analog system? We have such project in the past about the hybrid synchronization. And uh, it turned out that it's uh, very promising for both identification properties and analog system control properties. Uh, so that's all for today. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Wallace and all of you for invitation. It's our pleasure to work with you. And I think that the most a suitable word is friendship for our partnership because we are really friends. Thank you very much.